so far. We've been to ones I've already found, and the one that we did go to that I haven't found yet wasn't there. So we're just continuing. Reservoir. Mountains. Trail. There's a bench. That's where it is. So I didn't find any new caches. Um, we didn't go far enough to get the ones I haven't found, but we did try and find one that I haven't found before, but we couldn't find it again. I think it's gone. Um, so it's probably about a five mile hike total. Kind of muddy. Uh, we saw some cows fighting. That kind of stuff. And uh, another thing, you got a parking ticket because I didn't realize it was a five dollar for parking and I didn't pay it so I got hit with a sixty eight dollar fine for not paying five dollars which kind of is annoying so I don't know if I can fight it or whatever but we'll see now I'm getting some lunch all right uh, it's dark, but maybe you can still see. But anyway, today I helped build uh, these boxes. We've been working on these. My dad's been working on these every weekend since October. So you have a box. It's got a carabiner. This comes out. You can unlock it, and the top opens. This is going to have a, something to hold it up to, but right now it just opens all the way. And on top you've got a storage space for a stove, and maybe like a cutting board. And then the front door opens. And you have a space there for a cooking grill or something. And then there's a drawer up here and a space here. Now what's interesting about this is that these, this is only the front or the back side. This side also opens. And where this short piece is, there's a square this big but even wider on the other side so it's accessible from both sides so there's a the top door and as you can see there's another hinge on this side and then another door right here so there's two sides to this thing it's pretty cool design I think there's removable legs which fit on the side so it holds it up and we're building five of them handles on the sides so it's for when you're camping you can put all your cooking equipment and cleaning stuff inside of the box and then you can use it as a cooking and dishwashing station so pretty cool kind of expensive uh, all the hardware paint and wood and everything and it takes a long time to make them. But it's a cool project. And it should be done very soon. Homemade oh, bacon pepperoni pizza. Yum. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Conway's Game of Life. But basically, it's a grid. There are a few rules. If a live cell is bordered by less than two then the cell dies if a live cell is bordered by more than three other live cells it dies to simulate overcrowding the other ones to simulate underpopulation if a live cell is surrounded by two or three it survives um, and I've kind of modeled that same behavior in Little Big Planet 2 
and I will show you that's where all those sounds are so you can see the white squares are the live ones the black squares are the dead ones so if a white square is surrounded by two or three other white squares it will stay alive if it is surrounded by less than that or more than that it will turn into a black square and not be counted as a live cell to any of the other squares and if it stays black for too long it will be destroyed and it just sits there and it just runs I don't have to do anything so it's kinda cool and you can see up there it just keeps generating new ones to fall in as ones die and they can kind of work their way out here let's see how far they've gone because if, if they stack up and they roll yeah they've made it to there so if they stack up and roll they can actually work their way out but if one falls over then the end one is uh, only surrounded by one so it dies and then the next one is only surrounded by one and it dies and it's a chain reaction all the way back to the main pile so anyway that's my uh, Conway's Game of Life in Little Big Planet 2. Took me about an hour to make. I'll show you the logic in a minute. Okay, there's the logic board. I'll try and explain this. It's a very simple logic, so here it goes. Where's my hand? There it is. That sensor, if the count of uh, other cells around it becomes more than three, that line turns off. If this one becomes, uh, if it's less than two, this line is off. Um, they both need to be on for this AND gate to be on. So if it goes above three or below two, this will turn off. And then it will go to this timer here. And in 0.2 seconds, it will switch to off and turn off the sensor so other cells don't see it as alive. It will also turn off the light. So if it becomes, you know, if either, if both of these are on again, so it means if it's between two and three, these are both on, uh, the cell will come back to life again. As soon as this goes off, so as soon as the cell is overcrowded or uh, lonely, I guess, um, this starts counting, and if this counts up for three seconds, it destroys the cell with this and every cell has the same circuitry built in and it causes them to uh... to do that so yeah pretty cool little experiment I've probably shown too much of it already though but anyway hope you enjoyed that and find it interesting